unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covered the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Preadventure, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Mm. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balaam, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balaam and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. If I could use for a brief subject tonight, are you listening? You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you now for your thank you, Lord. thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you for your anointing. Ask, Lord God, that you would move me out of the way in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that you would speak to us tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for your word, Lord, for your glory, for your namesake, that you be praised forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we know this is um, a very familiar story, amen. And if we can kind of just touch on it just a little bit. Again, I promise I won't be before you long. Praise amen. This story starts off where it says that the children, amen, of Israel were going through the land as God had told them to do. And they were going to possess different, amen, cities and different towns and different places. And the Bible says that when they got, amen, close to, amen, the city of Jeshimon, the Bible says that Israel sent messengers unto King Sion and asked him if they could pass, amen, through the city. The Bible says, amen, that they said, we won't take anything of your field. We won't do anything in your city, but just let us pass up the king's highway. The Bible says, amen, that that city came out against Israel with a mighty people. They came out with a mighty strong hand because they did not want to give Israel passage. Amen. The Bible says that Amen. As they came out to go against Israel, the Bible says that God had given Israel the victory over these people. Amen. They came out of their city to fight with the children of Israel. But God was giving them, amen, the head start to go on and continue to possess the land. So the Bible says, amen, that they smote them a great people in that city. And they got to the Amorites where the Bible says that when they came to the city, amen, that they began to smite them and God had delivered them into Israel's hands. So the Bible says, amen, that they began to set their pitch and their camp before themselves in the city of Moab. The Bible says that, amen, that as they began to lodge there, that Balak began to look out over the people and he began to see this great number of people. And his mind frame wasn't to go out and be friends, but he was nervous. The Bible says that he and Moab was distressed because of the people, because it was a great people and they had heard what had happened to the Amorites. Amen. The Bible says that it got so bad to where he had to send, amen, for someone to come and see about the problem that he was having. Amen. But this was the people of God. This was the people of God that God had already told them that their seed was going to be as the sand of the seashore. This was the people of God where God told Abraham that, amen, if he could look up and count the stars in the heaven, that's how much people that he would have, amen, from his seed. The Bible says, amen, that as, amen, Balak began to look, he, he had to send forth and he called for Balaam to come. And he wanted Balaam, amen, to curse the people of God. Amen. And the subject again is, are you listening? Amen. And I'm getting to a point with this, but the Bible says, amen, that when they left to go to Balaam, amen, that they went with the reward of divination, amen. And it would seem to me that as you would read this story, for those that are familiar with it, that Hallelujah. Balaam would be, amen, a man of God. But, amen, a man of God would not need, amen, money to be able to prophesy. Amen, a man of God would not need money to be able to give the judgment what God has given, amen, through his mouth. Amen. amen. And the Bible says that they went with the rewards of divination and they got to Balaam and Balaam had to let them know, I have to talk to God first. I can't do what you want me to do. Let me go and talk to God. Amen. And the Bible says that when he come out, amen, he began to let them know that God is not pleased with this and God did not 
want me to do this. Amen. Again, are you listening? Because you see, you have to understand, amen, that this man, even though we know the story, had when, when they come to him again, the Bible says that he went back to the Lord. The Lord had already told him that don't go. These are a uh, blessed people. That these people are my people. Amen. But the Bible says that he went back to the Lord and he asked the Lord. And the Lord told him, if they come again, then go with them. But only speak what I want you to speak. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he rose up early in the morning and he got his donkey together with two of his servants. And he began to travel down the way. Amen. He had got, amen, so hooked onto this thing because he had told them the second time that they come. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and everything else, I won't go. Amen. But the Bible, amen, says that he got up that next morning and he was so fixated on it to where when he sat on his donkey, the Bible says, amen, the donkey began to move out of the way because the donkey saw the angel of God, amen, before him. The Bible says, amen, that Balaam, amen, he smote the donkey because he didn't understand what was going on. He was going, amen, to make some money. He was going to do what Balak wanted to be done, amen. And it would seem as if he would take it as a warning or as a sign that, amen, something is not right. Wow, yes, my donkey has taken me other places before, but this time something is different. The Bible says, amen, that he began to whip the donkey, and the donkey got straight just a little bit more, but everywhere the donkey's head turned, amen, the Bible says that the angel was standing there to where Balaam got his foot crushed against the wall, amen. Again, all you listening, because you see, like I said, I'm going to a place with this. You see, the Bible says, amen, that he had to beat the donkey again. Again, his mind was fixated onto what he was going to do, amen. The Bible says, amen, that we, amen, should lay aside every sin and every weight yes. that so easily besets yes. us. Amen. He can lay aside, amen, the things that, amen, were against God. The Bible says, amen, that the donkey fell from underneath him because he was just tired of getting beaten and yes. he was tired of looking at the angel with the yes. sword and he didn't want to die to where, amen, the Bible says that Balaam was so upset, God had to open the donkey's mouth. You see, you have to understand when God is speaking, amen, you have to be listening, amen. And this is where this subject comes from, amen. You see, hearing and listening are the same words, but there is something distinctive in those words, amen. Because you see, if I say I want you to hear me from a deliverer's point, that means that you will understand what I'm saying, you're going to pay attention, and you're going to listen. All right, All right. Listen means the same thing from a deliverer's point, amen. But if you think about it for a second on the receiving end of it, amen, if you say, I wonder if that child heard me after you called them three times. They heard you, but that didn't bring a response, amen. But if you get that child's attention, they're listening to you. You have to understand, amen, that the hearing part doesn't really bring about a response on the receiving end, amen. But the listening part, amen, that brings about a response, whether it's negative or positive, but it still brings about a response, amen. And the amen, again, the message is, are you listening? Because you see, amen, God, amen, begin to use the donkey, and the donkey had to tell him, what's, what's the matter, man? You're hitting me too much. I, I, I don't understand this. Why are you reading me? Am I not the same donkey that you used the other day? Amen. You used me to go to this place, but now you're going to beat me. And the Bible says that Balaam was so fixated to what he told him, I wanted you to do this. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you. My Lord. Amen. And the Bible says amen, that God had to touch Balaam's eyes for a second. Yes, and when, amen, the Bible Hallelujah. says that when he looked forward, he saw the angel standing with the sword. Hallelujah. Amen. At that time, he repented and he, he Lord, I'm sorry I've sinned. What, what, what's going on? Why is the angel of the Lord coming out to meet me? And the angel began to tell him, your ways are perverse before the Lord. I've come out to slay you. I haven't come for anything good. I haven't come to help you on your journey. I haven't come to help you along your way. But you were going to die if this donkey would not have intervened. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, that he said, if, you, if, it did, if this displeases you, tell me I'll turn around. See, his mind wasn't, wasn't on the fact that God had, amen, caught him and wanted him to repent truly. His mind was still on the fact that, hey, I can possibly still go. Because he said to the angel, if this displeases you, I'll turn around. But the angel told him, amen, you can still go, but you're going to speak only what I tell you to speak, amen. You're not going to speak anything else, amen. And again, are you listening? This is the topic of the message because 